the Dow and the Nasdaq surging their new record highs again, <laughs> I told you what's leading this market. It's Fang. That's right. It's Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and the artist formerly known as Google. Last time I told you not to write off these winners, especially Google, because they've got too much going for them, regardless of how the economy is doing or how the pandemic plays out. This group has languished for the past month, seemingly going out of style in the Wall Street fashion show. As money managers flock to small caps, cyclical names, oils, yeah, anything that can so-called deliver monster earnings growth when we all get vaccinated and the world goes back to business as normal. Now, they've seen, uh, they've seen as COVID trades, frankly, and many investors think that COVID trades, yes, their days are numbered. Witness the market's poor reaction to Uber COVID trade Zoom's blockbuster quarter. Tell you the fangs showing signs of life again. As you know, if you watched my show last night, my gut says they got a lot more room to run. But because this is a crazy moment in a crazy market, you can't just go with your gut. You have to take a more quantitative, more empirical, less emotional approach to stock picking. At a time when we're torn between soaring COVID cases and the vaccine lurking right around the corner, it can be tough to get your bearings. We know the winter will be terrible. We know that the FANG stocks have thrived during the worst parts of the pandemic, and we know that the pandemic's going away next year, although we don't know when we'll have enough vaccines for herd immunity. In an environment like this, it's tough to put together a forecast for the next few months, so why don't we do this? Let's try something else. When the fundamentals are unclear, you know what I like to default to? Technical analysis, which is why tonight we're going off the charts with one of our faves, Carolyn Broden, the brilliant technician who runs FibonacciQueen.com website. She also happens to be one of my colleagues at RealMoney.com. Broden took a look at some of the fang charts. She didn't include Google, but I already told you that's a dynamite one. And she liked what she saw. There's always an element of uncertainty with the technicals. But if these big tech stocks can hold above their recent lows, the Fibonacci queen says they could go higher, maybe much higher, in league with me. Yep, even though they've already had massive moves this year, she thinks they might have potentially a lot more upside. Why don't we check this? How does she come to the conclusion? Let's start with the daily chart of longtime Kramer fave, yes, Apple, own it, don't trade it. This thing peaked in early September, right? And then got clobbered as big tech rolled over and people decided to write off Apple again. For the past couple months, it's bounced around between 100, 120, 120. Broden points out that Apple's most recent low came in a week ago at 112. Okay, get this, I love this. At 112.59. And she thinks that could be a major pivotal low, a major turning point. Why? Comes down to her methodology. She measures past swings in a stock then runs them through the prism of Fibonacci ratios, a sequence that repeats over, itself, over and over. And in nature, uh, it flowers in pine cones, small shells. And for some crazy reason, definitely the stock market. In Apple's case, she found a cluster of Fibonacci price relationships around 112. Okay, now this is really important. The stock ended up bottoming less than 10 cents above that Fibonacci floor, okay? It's not just price. Broden uses the same tool set of the other axis of the chart. She looks at the time. Price, time, okay? She spotted a cluster of Fibonacci timing cycles coming due last Monday and Tuesday. These are dates when there's a high chance that a stock changes its trajectory. Sure enough, Apple bottomed on Tuesday. Put it all together, and she thinks last week's low could be an important one. The kind of turning point moment that allows Apple to get some traction again. If that's the case, then the low holds, and Brewer can see the stock running to 127. 130, maybe as high as 136, taking out that. And if all goes well, it goes to 147. So, you know, those who own Apple, not, you know, all these analysts say, oh, I just did the channel check with the 12. <laughs> Shut up. Next up. Check out Amazon's daily chart. Oh, this one has a similar story. Broden points out that Amazon made a key low at 2,950 on November 2nd. All right, so you can see this low. Uh, that, like Apple, that low coincided with a bunch of her Fibonacci price levels and time cycles. Good call. Since then, Amazon's been working its way higher, climbing to 3,220 today. Remember, everyone decided this one was no good either. Uh, and she says as long as it holds above 2,950, you're okay. More gains. Her targets. Amazon could sprint to 3,461. 3,581, 3,644, and do I hear $3,737 and potentially even higher before it runs out of steam. Nice. That one doesn't look as good to me as Apple, but she, she's doing 
Fibonacci, and that's one of her absolute faves. Okay, how about Facebook? All right, this one gave you its latest low at 264 roughly three weeks ago. Everyone wrote it off there. A couple of bucks above some big Fibonacci price levels. Coincided perfectly with the cluster for Fibonacci time. She nailed this one entirely on the bottom. Again, that tells the stock, it tells you the stock could be ready for a more sustained move higher, even as it's already rebounded to 287 in a spectacular session today. Broden says that as long as Facebook holds above that kilo, it should be smooth sailing with a stock headed for $306 at a minimum. Hey, maybe cruising to 318 or even 342 as it blows through that level. Finally, there's Netflix, arguably the most controversial of the FANG names because it reported some subpar subscriber growth last time around. Lately, though, the stock's turned around. She, it don't, doesn't hurt that they have a huge hit on their hands with Queen's Gambit. Proving management can still churn out terrific new programming. Just like Facebook, Netflix made its most recent low on November 10. Is it not amazing that these all trade together? No, because they're all in these same ETFs that people put together. Um, and Broden had a bunch of Fibonacci timing cycles coming due on February 9th through February, uh, I'm sorry, on November 9th through November 12th. See these? They all came due. Uh, that's a symmetry factor. The last time Netflix got hit with a big decline was back in July. Okay, so we take a look at that. Uh, the stock fell 108 before turning uh, $108 before turning around. This time, the stock fell $109. Look at this. This is perfect symmetry. And then it started climbing again. Now, I know that seems like a silly thing to focus on, but Broden notes that many stock swings show this kind of symmetry pattern. You repeat the last de- advance or decline, then the move exhausts itself. If that sounds really stupid and obvious, I agree. The thing is, stupid and obvious happens every day in the stock market. You can make a ton of money. Between the symmetry of and Fibonacci timing cycles, Baroden thinks that November 10th was a launching pad for Netflix. As long as the stock doesn't fall below $463, that's the level we don't want it to breach, she predicts a lot more upside. Long term, the Fibonacci queen says Netflix could rally all the way to $603, up nearly 100 bucks from where it is trading right now. The bottom line, if the FANG stocks can stay on the market's good side, then the charts, as interpreted by Carolyn Baroden, suggests they got a lot more room to run. I think she's right. This is the point on the calendar when money managers crowd into the year's biggest winners to show their clients how smart they are. That means winners like Facebook, like Amazon, like Apple, like Netflix. And, of course, you know, I think Google should keep winning at least for the next four weeks. Get in these stocks, people. Stop letting people tell you got to be in Conoco. All right? There. Okay, let's go to James in Illinois, please. James. Hey, Booyah from the Homer Superman. Really? I didn't know. I thought yeah. it was from, uh, like, uh, like a different pla- Krypton. I thought it was from Krypton. <laughs> no, Are you from Krypton? Metropolis, Illinois. Is that near Metropolis, Krypton? Illinois. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought he was from Krypton. Uh, okay. On October 13th, you recommended Data Dog. Yeah, and the I dog. Believe that's been its, I believe that's been its yearly high, so I'm asking your recommendation. Oh, no. Data, Data Dog is terrific. You know, I mean, a lot of people just feel the stock got overheated. But this is one of those companies. I wish it didn't have the name Data Dog because it's absolutely. There are a lot of companies that would like to acquire this company if it came down at all. So I think you're fine. It's a really well run company. The quarter was fine. I don't know why everyone was picking on it. Anyway, uh, uh, Clark Kent, I think, is from. I think Clark Kent's from there. I think that Superman is from the planet Krypton. Okay? And I'm from Kirby's Fourth World. Bang, showing signs of life again, and the chart suggests. That they got more room to run. Are you in any of these? Or are you so busy owning Freeport? Okay, the, there's much more bad money ahead. As demand for electric vehicles continues to increase, I'm eyeing one play coming public in the electric vehicle space that could charge higher on the trend. And yeah, that's right. I actually might like this one. But uh, you don't want to miss my take on. Huh, I'm not telling you. And many American work, uh, workers need help. And, and, and will they get it? Will Speaker Pelosi, Secretary Mnuchin, and lawmakers give them a hand so they can make it across the COVID finish line? I care about this, and you should too. Plus, all your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or Give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.